In the news this week, a new documentary sparks debate about society's treatment of people with Down syndrome, Christian artists are threatened after refusing to print invites for a same-sex wedding, and an archaeological dig unearths historical support for the Bible. Hello. A documentary that aired this week sparked widespread public debate about society's treatment of people with Down syndrome. In a world without Down syndrome, actress Sally Phillips, whose 11-year-old son has the condition, questioned the implications of a new test for Downs that is claimed to be 99% accurate. Currently, 90% of unborn babies diagnosed with Downs are being aborted in England and Wales. Philip spoke to Professor Lynn Chitty, who is pushing for the non-invasive test to be made available on the NHS. Chitty claims it will not significantly affect the current abortion rate, but the rollout of new screening in Iceland has led to a 100% abortion rate for babies with Downs. Phillips described the test as an experiment that could have catastrophic consequences for the Down syndrome population and that the answer is not termination. If we have a society that is unable to care for people, then the problem is not the person. Last week, a group of mothers spoke out about the pressure they came under to abort their Down syndrome children. Nicola from Tadworth, Surrey, was told her baby would have Downs. The consultant kept asking if we wanted a termination, as we were both young and could start again. Beth from Dorset said she still recoils at a phone call she received from her midwife. I was offered a termination there and then, even though there was still an 80% chance he'd be fine. Head of Communications at the Christian Institute, Kieran Kelly, stressed that all human beings have intrinsic value. This new test for Down syndrome has its roots in the idea that some people's lives have no value and so they should be screened out from society. And this is profoundly wrong. Already, 90% of babies diagnosed with Downs are aborted, and this test is designed to increase that number. But these unborn children, perhaps the most vulnerable people in our society, need to be protected, not eradicated. All human beings are made in the image of God and have a special intrinsic value, regardless of how young or how old, able-bodied or disabled that life might be. Sally Phillips' documentary is available to watch on BBC iPlayer. Official figures have revealed just 1.7% of the UK population are lesbian, gay or bisexual. The 2015 figures are drawn from the annual population survey, which questions over 300,000 people a year. Compiled by the Office for National Statistics, they show a 0.1% increase from the previous year. The vast majority of the UK, 93.7%, said they were heterosexual, with the remainder selecting other, don't know or opting not to respond. Simon Calvert, the Christian Institute's Deputy Director for Public Affairs, pointed out that the ONS figures have consistently shown low numbers of LGB people. The publication of these figures make the general public question the agenda of scriptwriters who populate their storylines with disproportionate numbers of LGBT characters. It also makes them question the priorities of politicians who give such prominence to LGBT issues in education and elsewhere. Two Christian business owners in the US are facing fines and imprisonment after turning down a request to create invitations for a same-sex wedding. Graphic designers Joanna Duca and Brianna Kosky run a stationery company called Brush and Nib Studio that makes invitations for a variety of events, including weddings. They've been accused of violating laws which require Christians to cater for all customer requests, including those made by same-sex couples. The Phoenix Non-Discrimination Ordinance also prevents them from explaining to customers why they could only create art consistent with their beliefs about marriage. They are being supported in their legal case by Alliance Defending Freedom, a religious liberty group. Jonathan Scruggs of ADF said that no American should have the government force them to create art against their artistic and religious beliefs. There is now the threat of a $2,500 fine and possible imprisonment for up to six months for refusing to comply. And finally, an archaeological dig has unearthed new artefacts supporting the historical record of the Bible. The discoveries made at the Tel Achish National Park in Israel support the biblical account of King Jehu's destruction of Baal worship. 
The record in 2 Kings 10 tells how Jehu's soldiers destroyed the Temple of Baal, tearing down its shrine and using it as a toilet. Just such a toilet has now been found during an excavation by archaeologists, complete with marks where the horns, a symbol of Baal, had been removed. Other biblical artefacts have been uncovered at the same site. Zev Elkin, Minister of Jerusalem and Heritage, said, Before our very eyes, these new finds become the biblical verses themselves and speak in their voice. Well, that's all for this week. For regular updates and information on all our stories, plus much more, visit our New Look website at christian.org.uk. Until next time, goodbye.